Well, Dragon Ball Super Episode 113 left me with a little bit more surprises than I expected. Um, not only that, outside of anime, uh, in terms of video games that have came out recently, Dragon Ball, not Dragon Ball, I'm sorry, uh, Assassin's Creed Origins has definitely impressed me. Uh, maybe I'll make a review on the, on the game or not, I don't know, maybe I'll do some videos, it may depend on whether I really care or not. Uh, for for once, there might be someone who isn't talking about Super Mario Odyssey, but frankly, I just don't have the fucking game or anything to switch to play it, so... Whatever, we're not here to talk about, you know, Assassin's Creed Origins or Super Mario Odyssey. We're here to talk, we're here to talk about Dragon Ball Super Episode 113. We're here to talk about that. And I was left with a lot of surprises in, in terms of, well, the ending of the episode. The, end, uh, the ending with the previews. To put it bluntly, I'm just going to say we're going to get a fusion. Who are we going to get a fusion with? Uh, I'll leave it to you to go and figure it out for yourself, or for you to just go watch the episode previews or not, you know. I'm just gonna leave it there, if you wanna go and figure it out, you can go ahead and do it all you like, but I'm just gonna tell you now, cause I may or may not say who it will be with, uh, by the end of the episode, I'm just gonna fucking point that out right here, okay. So if you get mad if I fucking say who it is, and you don't wanna know who it is, Fuck you. <laughs> so the episode begins off with where it left off last last week. Of course, it reuses the same uh, scene that it, we were left off with last week, and that was Goku getting bombarded by three of uh, three of the robots from Universe Three. I uh, don't know their names, of course, as usual. Uh, Cleopatra jumps jumps in and fucking saves Goku basically kind of just not knocks him off the arena But you know pretty much just saves Goku and then of course uh, We get Cleopatra saying like yeah, I want to fight you Goku And then Goku's like yeah, I'll fight even though I don't have a lot of my stamina or energy back I'll I'll do it because I'm Goku <laughs> It's late at night. I'm not tired. It's just that it's late at night and I don't really want to do anything, you know, out of, out of extraordinarily stupid or whatever. So after that, you know, Goku goes into like his fucking stance, right? Like how he normally does. And then we get a shot or not a shot. We get a scene and some dialogue from Khalifa saying, you know, that, you know, they lost a hit and then they lost Kappa. And she, I guess she's, I guess she fucking cared. I mean, at least she kind of shows that she fucking cared and shit, and the whole, like, ambition with Khalifa and, uh, I guess, Kale, sort of, mainly Khalifa, is that she wants to she wants to go Super Saiyan 3, and I, I like Khalifa, and I think a lot of people like Khalifa, too, is because she's her, she's her own character, but what she very, but she, what, what she basically is, is just Universe 6 Goku, and as a girl. That's that's basically it. I think that's a lot of reasons why people like Lily Flip, uh, other than you know perhaps her design, and that's it. You know, but it it's still you know people like Lily I like Lily as well. She's definitely an interesting character, and I do like seeing her whenever she does fight, along with Kale, as long as she's not in her berserker form. So, uh, you know, Khalifa is, I believe, Super Saiyan 2. It looks like it looks like she's in her she's in her two, Super Saiyan 2 form. Uh, Goku's in his base. Goku was in his base form the majority of the time, and he he didn't even have his full stamina up, you know, for all of the fight, you know, because he had just gotten done fighting, you know, Jiren in his Ultra Instinct form, and then over excessively using Super Saiyan Blue along with Kaioken. So a lot of his Stamina is gone. He he got a lot of it back. It seems like because in his base form he was able to go toe to toe against Khalifa in Super Saiyan 2. Um, Whis notices the fact that it's like there's a difference between a martial artist and just a straight up brawler because in the episode in the beginning when the fight starts, Goku is dodging a lot of Khalifa's attacks and stuff like that because Khalifa is just like. 
going straight at Goku, trying to land as many hits as possible. But Goku's dodging a lot of her attacks because he, well, is a martial artist. He knows how to adapt to someone's fighting style and, you know, find an opportunity to, you know, dodge an attack and then also land a hit on them whenever he needs to. And, you know, that works for the majority of the time, but because, of course, Khalifa is a Saiyan herself, she adapts to Goku's uh, uh, fighting style and, and what he's doing. He She lands a couple of punches on him, uh, Goku, same way as well. Um, and then we see a technique that I, or rather we, as the, the fan base, haven't seen in a while. And after Khalifa, you know, lands a a fucking right hook across his fucking face or whatever or in his fucking gut uh he uses he starts using the after image technique uh haven't seen that in a while and frankly you know I, I liked it I liked it I like seeing the after image technique again because it reminds me of early Dragon Ball not early Dragon Ball well kind of it reminds me of Dragon Ball when you know the after image technique and stuff like that <clears throat> like that was you know relevant it was it, it had a it had its presence and it was used a lot I, I really like seeing it in the episode uh Khalifa obviously you know gets hit by uh gets uh tricked by the attack I don't know what word I was trying to look for uh you know she goes after one of the after images Goku lands an attack right behind her he goes off uh saying like oh you can't beat my after image technique you can't get super saiyan 3 and it's uh, it, i watched geekdom's review on the episode and i i kind of agree with them on this statement saying that uh khalifa and kale seem to almost be like fangirls of the transformations and they just want to and khalifa just wants to get all of the transformations like, she had already seen Goku in Ultra Instinct and Super Saiyan Blue, and I think maybe even Super Saiyan God. But she doesn't care. You know, she she just, she just wants all the transformations because uh, later on in the episode, she does see Super Saiyan 3 because Goku goes Super Saiyan 3 for like a couple of seconds, not even that long. But, excuse me, we'll get there when we get there. So, the fight continues on. Uh, he starts using the instantaneous movement, instant transmission. Uh, you know, she's adapting to his movements and stuff like that. Uh, stuff happens, stuff happens. Roshi's like, oh, that's incredible adaptability. Uh, the episode was really prevalent with really only showing Goku and Khalifa, and then later on Kale, and then only a couple of shots of, well, you know, the people on that are on the bleachers and stuff like that. Uh, we get a couple of shots of them clashing each other. Uh, then we get like a split shot of what you'll probably see as my thumbnail. I had already agreed to using this as my thumbnail since I saw this on Twitter, but just putting that out there, I just I just thought it was hilarious when I saw it, and I was like, yes, I'm using it. <laughs> I was like, yes, I'm using this as my thumbnail, and you know, that, that, that I'm just putting it out there. So, uh. Khalifa says some shit, Goku's like, yeah, I'm gonna transform, and so he transforms, and initially I thought he went into Super Saiyan 2, that's not the case, he's actually in Super Saiyan 1, and you can tell from like his hairstyle, I thought it was Super Saiyan 2 because of the electricity, and stuff, it was just really awkward of a transformation scene for going only Super Saiyan 1. Uh, Khalifa starts shooting off some blasts, Goku blocks it and shit, uh, starts saying some stuff, starts saying some stuff, like it's a killer attack. Khalifa's like, yeah, you're not the only one who's got stuff up your sleeve. I'm like, oh, that's that's a cool line, <laughs> I guess. Uh, Khalifa throws another key blast, uh, Goku reflects it, Zenon's like, oh, that's amazing, and I'm like, yeah, that's amazing, sure. Da -da -da. Actually, there is a shot where it looks like he is in Super Saiyan 2, but Geekdom's like going off saying it's Super Saiyan 1. I'm like, no, that's bullshit. He's clearly in Super Saiyan 2. <laughs> He's clearly in Super Saiyan 2, but whatever. Uh, Goku lands a couple of attacks. Uh, animation's actually really good in this episode. 
Uh, from what I hear and from what I saw from some people's comments in people's videos, they got some new staff for the animation team. It was pretty cool. It's pretty good. Uh, obviously, it's a good thing, you know. Uh, there's a line. I'm just gonna say this right now. There's a line that Krillin says in the episode that I fucking hate. It's not really that big of a deal. I just think that it's fucking stupid that it's in the episode in the first place because he's uh, he says literally quote so this is a fight between two super saiyan twos and then quote and I i'm sitting there on my chair like yeah that's a fight between two super saiyan twos i know you were fucking an acid spit from deborah and you didn't fucking feel the energy of the fight between goku and vegeta when they were in super saiyan 2 but it's like like, I, like come on you literally just saw a hit fight Jiren and then Goku fight Jiren and then stuff other happen stuff and then you're gonna be all impressed by Khalifa in Super Saiyan 2 with fucking Goku in Super Saiyan 2 as well? It's just... I, I hate that line because it doesn't make any sense of why it's there. Fast forward a little bit. Uh, Goku was like, oh yeah, you're strong, Khalifa. I'm really impressed that you mastered Super Saiyan 2. Apparently she's mastered fucking Super Saiyan 2. Uh, Goku is like, yeah, I'm gonna fight the both of you. Hey, Kale, come in and join in the fight. I'm gonna fight the both of you. I'm like, oh. Well, someone seems a little almost cocky, right? So, Khalif, not Khalifa, Kale goes into Super Saiyan. Uh, she goes off saying the whole time, like, yeah, I'm gonna get stronger with my sis. I'm like, oh, cool. That, that, that's neat. Uh, really good choreo choreography, though. A lot of the lines and dialogue that were in the episode kind of annoyed me. I find this episode more enjoyable to watch rather than to, you know, listen in terms of dialogue or read in terms of dialogue and in terms of it being subtitles. This, this 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 episode's a lot more enjoyable to watch rather than to read in terms of dialogue and narrative. That's just me though, I guess. I mean, take it with a grain of salt because it's whatever, really. Um, and then Krillin is like, is like, yeah, but this is how Goku is. Of course, he's gonna try to take on two Saiyans at once. You know, that's just how he fights. Fucking. Fucking Champa's doing Champa stuff. He's like, yeah, knock Son Goku off. I'm like, yeah, but that's not gonna happen. You know, because who's gonna be Jiren? Because obviously Vegeta isn't. Obviously, obviously Vegeta isn't because Jiren was like, was like, uh, yeah, I'm, I don't, I don't need to do anything else. I'm just gonna sit here and meditate. And then all the Vegeta fans, especially last week, were like, Well, what about Vegeta, Jiren? No, no. Screw, screw Vegeta. He's not He's not strong enough. Um, stuff happens. More dialogue goes off. Uh, I believe it was Roshi. I don't think it was Krillin. Because Geekdom said that in his review. And I'm like, I don't think, I don't think Krillin said that. I'm pretty sure that was... Uh, Master Roshi that was saying like uh, maybe he's using um, that technique that Goku was using against Jiren, that thing that he used against Jiren, that's literally what he says uh, Beerus is like, what, Ultra Instinct? and Whis is like, no it, it can't be Ultra Instinct because, well frankly that's not possible right now because Ultra Instinct is a really difficult thing to fucking achieve, even for a guy of destruction, which we had already established that, but I guess they just thought to point that out again. But his senses are being sharpened, apparently, from fighting Khalifa and Kale. That's what Weiss is saying. I find that almost like a weird terms of dialogue from Weiss, because it's like, yeah, that might be true, but I don't know if you can really say that. And then we get this really cool transformation shot where it's like, Khalifa and Kale, they shoot a blast at Goku. Goku, like, holds it in midair, like like how Gohan did when he was in Super Saiyan 2 and holding to the, the Destructo disc with his fucking arms and shit. Uh, Goku does the same thing with the Key Blast. He then explodes out of power, causing a whole bunch of smoke to surround him and then electricity and shit. And then boom, he's in he's in Super Saiyan three. 
And then, of course, uh, Khalifa, his, her fucking pussy gets wet, you know? <laughs> you know, she gets excited, you know? She's like, oh my god, this is this is Super Saiyan 3! Uh, you know, Kale's obviously really impressed too, but Khalifa's like, oh my god, this is Super Saiyan 3! This video's getting demonetized, by the way. Fuck. <laughs> so, yeah, Goku goes Super Saiyan 3 for like a solid 15 seconds. Like, I don't, I don't know how long it was that he was in transformation. It wasn't long. Like, he immediately reverts back, right? And then Go Goku's just like, yeah, well, I guess I didn't recover enough stamina to kind of keep the form, you know? I, like, you would almost think at this point in the series... Goku would have figured out a way to use Super Saiyan 3 without the, re the bad, terrible restriction of losing your stamina, like, really fucking quick. But whatever, right? He just doesn't know how to do it yet because he doesn't know how to use the form all that well. I don't, I don't know. So, then we, lift, then we leave off with the cliffhanger of Kale going in her Berserker form. And immediately my interest for Kale has dropped by like 50% because for those of you who are active viewers on my channel, you know that I don't like Broly and anything Broly related, I don't like. But because it's Kale and I do like Kale's character, you know, I still have interest, but it's dropped by like 50% because now she's basically wanna be fake look like bitch ass Broly motherfucker, you know? Like it's just like, like can you just fuck off? Like can you not be in my episode? Like just go away. <laughs> just go away. Like can you can you not? So uh afterwards we get a couple shots of what happens and uh, I'm talking about episode previews, by the way. I don't do this too often, but when something like really, really cool and interesting happens in the preview that I just feel like I should talk about, uh, I'll go ahead and do it. So, yes. At the end of the episode, we get a preview, right? We get a preview, and that is uh, a couple of, of shots uh, and fight scenes of Khalifa and Kale still fighting Goku. But the big thing, the big big thing that happens at the end of the preview which cuts off the end of the episode that is a fusion and for those of you who don't want to know who this fusion is uh, I think I might have already fucking spoiled it by accident if I didn't oh, cool if I did I apologize but for those of you who don't want to know who it is you can leave now it's whatever just drop a like before you leave but anyways we get a fusion. We get a fusion next episode. I don't know if we're going to get that in like terms of like the middle of the episode or we're going to leave off with a cliffhanger with this fusion, but with we're just putting we're just putting it bluntly, we're getting a fusion of Khalifa and Kale. And I almost like I, I didn't realize you know, you know, kind of my opinions of what I thought about this potential, or not potential fusion, but this fusion of Khalifa and Kale. I didn't have this, this initial reaction about the, the fusion for at first, but now it's like, I almost, in a sense, don't like it that much anymore. It's like, it's like no, I'm still going to be super excited for this fusion of Khalifa and Kale and stuff like that. Uh, people are already speculating what the fusion name's already going to be and stuff like that. But, you, you know, that, that that's all hunky-dory and everything. You know, that's fine. Uh, go ahead and like it for what it is. I don't mind that whatsoever. It's just, I'm, I'm talking about in terms of, you know, the rules that were set up for this tournament of power. You know, I like the, the, the essence and the danger of not being able to use items in a tournament of power, you know. Because it's like, it was super cool knowing the fact that we won't be relying on, you know, senzu beans and shit because, you know, that means Goku could just get unlimited Zenkai and then, you know, get stronger than all the gods of destruction. And it's just like, I like the idea of having that rule there, not being able to use items in a tournament of power because it restricted a lot of what the fighters can do in terms of like their techniques and shit like some of them re re uh, rely on some items that, that have to be used like with Roshi was using the Mafuba right he had a jar 
and what he would do is that he would use the mafuba, seal the person in the jar, and then throw him off of the arena, right? And then Zeno let it slide because he thought it was neat, right? And a lot of viewers, you know, basically did the same thing, except kind of me at first. I let it slide in the end, but at first I was like, uh, I don't know how I feel about that, you know, kind of letting this jar item being used. It's like, yeah, it's from Roshi, and Roshi, you know, is using the Mafuba and stuff like that, but what we saw from Roshi, you know, he he was doing, he was holding his own, you know, it was it was really cool watching him fight, and then he pulls out this item as a jar, and then he uses the Mafuba, right? And then now we're getting something that is almost hacks OP, which is fucking fusion, right? And it's like, yeah, it's a fusion of Khalifa and Kale. Yeah, they're both strong, of course, but, you know, they're not god tier of, like, a fusion with Goku and, and Vegeta and some Vegito and stuff like that. But it's still fusion. With fusion, and especially Patara fusion, you know, you're significantly more powerful than you ever were as two people. You're, you've are you mixed both the, both power of the two people and put it into one, and now you're significantly more powerful. So an item as powerful as Patara Fusion, and then later on if, you know, more and more items are to be allowed, like Senzu Beans, it almost just takes out, you know, the sense of almost danger that you see with the rule of no items being allowed in the tournament and I just almost don't know what the feel like, uh, feel about it I don't know if I like it or not I don't know if I dislike it or not it's it's just that I would rather I would rather the fusion not be there because of the rule that was set up from the very start and then now it's basically it's almost like it doesn't even matter anymore you know that might that, that might just be me nitpicking or not I don't know it, it's just honestly how I feel. I don't know. I don't really know how I feel about it, but in the end of the day, it's whatever. You know, it's it's Dragon Ball. They're going to allow stuff to happen because reasons in marketing, <laughs> as Masako, Masako X would say. So, anyways, uh, that's, that's the end of the episode preview and the episode itself and the end of this video. I have nothing else really to say other than uh, most of the dialogue in my opinion was subpar you know it was okay I didn't really understand why stuff was said but it's whatever uh, animation was really good choreography was really good and fighting you know goes alongside with choreography but fighting was really entertaining to watch and stuff like that but uh, that's either he either here or there it's neither here or there whatever you know whatever the saying is uh, that's the end of the video. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure to drop a like. If you're new to the channel, please consider consider <laughs> please consider hitting that subscribe button uh, for future content just like this. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Uh, hopefully soon, I'll probably get into streaming Assassin's Creed Origins maybe tomorrow if it doesn't you know if it allows me to stream it like how I want to. But whatever. Um, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Uh, this video is probably coming out really late at night. It's 1030. Uh, hopefully I can get it out uh, before midnight at least. Whatever. doesn't really matter. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. See you in the next video. Peace out.